Hey, this is Karen Coach's Corner Chats, and on the podcast today, I've got Brian Hurley. Brian, where are you at and what you up to? Well, thank you, Karen, for allowing me to be on your podcast. I appreciate uh, this opportunity that you have uh, given me. Um, I am currently out of Houston, Texas. I am currently coaching a U-17 girls club team. Uh, we are in Division One, which is also called the Dynamo Dash League here in Houston. And we are currently in uh, first place, hoping to get promoted to the next league, which is the State Classic League. So Houston, Texas. So you just um, do you just deal with all those ice storms in the last two, three weeks? We did. We did. Definitely. It was uh, something new that we here in Houston uh, really haven't experienced much of, uh, especially with all the power outages, um, the freezing. You know what? I mean, I had icicles on my on my roof that were 12 inches long that I've never seen in my life. So it was it was quite an experience. So it sounds like you have a very talented group of young ladies in, in your on your club team. I do. Um, so when I first started coaching, um, I was coaching three-year-olds. Uh, my son wanted to play, and my wife asked me, hey, I'm going to sign him up for club soccer, or is that something you're interested in coaching him on, or what? And I thought about it for a little bit, and... I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I want to coach them. And the reason why I wanted to coach them is just because I wanted to you know, try to teach them correct, you know, try to teach them some of the, the right stuff. I've been playing since I was six. I'm 40 years old now. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to give him some of my experience that, that I had, uh, uh, that I've had through the years. So we started it. We, uh, it was, you know, three aside. There were six of six players on the team, two girls and four boys. And, it was, it was a blast, you know, three on three with three little, you know, two little goals. And, and I was able to be on the field and, and coaching them, kind of directing them, setting them in certain places. So, so it was a blast. Um, and that's where it all started. Um, as, as that progressed, I have an older uh, daughter um, who, did, who wasn't interested in playing. I tried to get her to play. She, she didn't want anything to do with soccer. Uh, but then after she saw how much fun her brother was having, she was like, hey, dad, I want to, I want to sign up. So, so now she joined the team. We're a little bit older now. And, uh, you know, at, at that point, I have, you know, three girls and the rest were boys and we're playing co-ed. Um, and and one of the one of the girls that I started with three years old, she had started, you know, she joined that team also. So she had been with me uh, during that time. Um, so we were doing uh, co-ed for a while until they got to an age where I had to split them up. And I debated, you know, what do I do? Do I have two teams? Do I, you know, stay with one and give, you know, uh, uh, coach another, you know, to coach the other girls? Um, but I decided I, I want to still coach my kids. I still want to coach the girls and I still want to coach my son. So I started with two teams. And uh, that was that was a little bit challenging of how the logistics were going to go as far as um, how I was going to hold practices. Um, but what I did, I just combined the practices since there was only about seven of them on each team. I just had 14 players and combined boys and girls. And, and that's how we train um, over the year. Uh, as the seasons progressed, I kept the same girls. I, I retained those girls. But as far as the boys go, I always had new boys. Every fall and spring season were new boys except for my son. And so I'm and these boys had never played before. So I'm basically with a base over and over again. Um, but with the club doing more advanced. Um, so I eventually uh, realized it wasn't that fair for my son to just go over the basics. Uh, a buddy that had a Division II team was willing to sign on his team. So that's what I did. I uh, put on his team and concentrated on girls. And so when you say the, uh, the team is experienced, yes, they are, because a lot of them, I have, the, you know, they're, 14, 15, and, and a couple of 16. And a, half of the team I've coached uh, since they were three, four, five, six years old. Um, and, and that's been a blast because just to see how far they've developed, how far they've come, um, how much they've learned and see them to grow into these, these young women um, and, and the skill that they have has just been a journey for me that just, that's second to none. I, 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 I'm just so honored to, to have that, that, opportunity to do that 
you you almost informally created your own little mini academy. They've come from like a little tiny things and candy league and all that stuff. And they've just kind of built up and built up. What was the, um, I thought it was cool that you kept the groups together. What was, was, what was the dynamic like when it was boys and girls, or was that the age where they were like there, I don't see a difference. Or do you think it helped the girls in terms of their development, having to play against boys? I think it did help the girls play against boys. I mean, at the time they really didn't see, it wasn't much of a difference because they were still kind of young, you know, six, seven, eight years older. But it it did help a little bit for, with their uh, physicalness, I guess, and, and not being timid or or shy uh, to go against boys, you know, because you know they, the 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 I guess stereotype is you know, girls play against girls, boys against boys, and but it was. I think for them, it was like just a barrier that they broke through that they, they didn't even bother them. Um, and it's helped as they grow because now that they're playing against other girls, I mean, they are more physical and um, it, it's helped them, I think, develop a little bit better, a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, more uh, quicker. Let's put it that way. The other thing I thought was interesting is you said that the girls that you picked up or worked with as younger kind of stayed as a core group, but the boys, there was a lot of kind of turnover. Do you, what kind of things do you think may be attributed to that kind of the difference between the two, if any? You know, it, it's hard, it's hard to say because I mean, there, there are so many sports and, you know, I can't say that it's just the boys were, were doing other stuff other than soccer and the girls weren't because the girls were, were still involved in other sports as well. They were involved in dance. They're involved in volleyball. They're involved in uh, just, just a dynamic very of sports um it was just they you know they wanted to keep playing it and they wanted to stick with it um and they're still sticking with it uh and whereas the boys it's just uh, maybe they just didn't enjoy it as much just because they're starting out maybe their parents just put them in there saying hey this is something for you to do and they just didn't like it um as as the dynamics of coaching your own kids as rewarding as it is, there's got to be some like, tr is there drawbacks to it? Like I've done the same thing. I have three kids, I've coached them. And there's been times where we've gotten to a line like where now my daughter plays for someone else because there was too much. It wasn't coach player anymore. It was, it was dad getting on daughter kind of thing. Do you, how do you balance that kind of between coach and dad? You know, I, I've heard a lot of stories like that. Um, and and at one point, it was kind of scaring me because I still wanted to coach uh, my daughter. And, but so I was hoping that it wouldn't come to that. And it hasn't. And I think the reason why it hasn't is because, you know, I'm talking to her all the time, you know, when we're coming to and from practice, to and from games, I'm giving her my understanding of the game and, and, and breaking it all down and, and, and analyzing every little thing that happened. And she's picking it all up and she's seeing, you know, and, and realizing, Hey, maybe my dad does know what he's talking about. Maybe I, you know, I saw that, and you know, I don't want to say like, but, but it's, it's, so she sees that. So, you know, it would be kind of like, I always tell her, I was like, you'd be dumb not to listen to me. You know, I'm, I'm telling you exactly <laughs> what it is. So, you know, for you to go listen to someone else, you know, I'm, I'm showing you um, and, and she sees it. And yeah, there are times when she has to, where, where she kind of uh, uh, pulls away or, or uh, uh, stops listening to me at times. Uh, because, you know, maybe she just doesn't want to hear it because, you know, she's a teenager. Um, but eventually she, she comes back and uh, realizes, I, you know, because then I have to give her that I told you so type of uh, uh, comment. Uh, but no, it, it hasn't been as challenging as other, you know, as I've heard from other coaches that coach their, their children. Um, and, and I'm fortunate that, it, that it's been like that. Um, and I try not to, you know, she, I may yell at her a, a little bit, you know, more than other players because she's my daughter. Um, but I try not to uh, uh, show her any type of uh, favoritism or anything. I mean, if, if you come to my team, you wouldn't even know she's my daughter mm -hmm. just based on the way I treat everyone, you know, the same. I, I look at, honestly, I look at all of my players as my daughters you know, that's how I look because I'm willing to do whatever I can to to help them to, to develop them to get them to the next level whatever I can do whatever they need any time of the day I'm available to them so is that is the age group that you have them now um is that 
at a high school age. So did, and where did high school occur in Texas for girls? So high school soccer starts, uh, they, they start getting together around December time. And then in the January is, is the preseason. Um, and then, you know, on to the games, you know, currently from February, March, uh, April. So are the girls um, on your team right now, are they just choosing to play club versus playing high school? No, the, uh, most of them are the ones that are age. So I do have uh, a range of girls. Yes, I have uh, the, they're 2004, but only have three 2004 players. The rest are 2005, 2006, and a couple 2007s. So um, most of them are freshmen and, and sophomore, and they are playing uh, high school soccer at this time. And at the same time, we are playing club. So that's a, a challenge that I have to deal with uh, between high school and, and club and balance that because uh, high school they practice five days a week which I wish I had five days a week to practice with them and and then they have games and and so I have to figure out a time when you know I, I wish the club didn't have a spring season honestly because I think it's a lot of load to put on the players where they're just constantly playing and and, and practicing and going to games and and it, it's just a, a heavy load at the same time, I can't really practice with them like I could in the fall when we had, you know, two two practices a week. Um, so basically what we did, um, the only day available was, you know, Sundays where nothing was going on. So I had, you know, three practices before our first game. Um, and I, you know, we just did an hour and a half practice. And then now we just show up to our games and and play. Um, and it's it's been working okay for now. But the hard part was, like you had mentioned at the beginning, was the freeze. The freeze, you know, took out all, you know, all school activity for a whole week. So the past two weeks, they've been playing catch up and they've been having three games a week of high school, plus our club game, which is four games and then practices in between, you know, for, for high school. So for the past two weeks, they may have, you know, eight games and, and 13 days, which is a lot of load. Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, is there communication between you and, and the high school coaches at all about like, Hey, what things are you doing? What am I doing? So you kind of can take care of that load a little bit. Not really. Uh, I try to, I try to not put myself in, uh, in the, the high school scene as much. Um, I will tweet certain things. Like I, I try to tweet, tweeting out, uh, because I do know some some coaches follow me uh, of my players, you know, just say, hey, you know, it's a heavy load. Can you, you know, maybe put in some periodization into your training or, or whatnot? Just hopefully they see it and hopefully it'll, you know, uh, uh, put something in their mind to maybe just do a do a heavy or uh, light load of practice or no practice at all because of so many games. Just say, let's just do some walkthroughs. Um, and that's what I had to do on some of my practices because even though it was Sunday, I just did walkthroughs and I told him, I was like, I, I know some of y'all are injured. Some of y'all are trying to heal. I'm not trying to put more on you. We're just going to walk through some stuff just to get back into the mode of, of club soccer again and, and what we're trying to do because, you know, they'll play different positions in high school. They have a different uh, type of uh, tactical, you know, stuff that they do. Um, whereas I just wanted to get them back on the same page for, for a club. It's an interesting dynamic to have that, beyond just the tactics and, and dealing with that is now, like you said, the periodization thing, which is becoming a buzzword is people I think are becoming mo hopefully more and more aware of that constantly pounding these kids over a period of time can wear them down. Um, the other cool thing you mentioned earlier was you got into the coaching with, with your younger, your son when he was three and it was kind of your wife's impetus of like, Hey, would you like to coach him? you said you played a lot and, and have some experience was coaching something that you kind of had on your radar or was that kind of the spark that kind of brought you to the point that you're at now? At one point, I, I'm sure when I was in, in my youth or and growing up, I think I did have uh, an idea that I may want to coach one time, but I never really thought, Oh, I'm going to get married and have kids and I'm going to, coach them. Um, I have a younger brother when, and, and so when I was, you know, 13 or 14, I was helping train their team a little bit as best as I could. Um, but when, when I started playing soccer, uh, my dad was my coach and, and the way that worked was, uh, my sister who is older than me, she brought home a flyer one day 
uh, from elementary school talking about, hey, join the soccer team. And my dad was totally against it. He, oh, I, you know, soccer, no, no, we're not doing soccer. We hate soccer. <laughs> and I don't know, he was, you know, more of a football, baseball type of guy. And my mom's like, no, I'm going to sign her up. She wants to play. So she signed, signed her up and, you know, they were going games. My dad went to one of her games to support her and he instantly fell in love with the game. I mean, like completely fell in love with the game so much where he started reading books, you know, learning as much as he could about the game, decided to coach and, and, and put me on the team. I had no idea what soccer was. I mean, who knows how I would play. He just started a team and, um, and, and it, the rest was history. I mean, I mean, we became a, a basically soccer was our religion growing up. I mean, that's all we did uh, from going to tournaments, practice. I mean, it was year round soccer. And my dad also coached uh, an older team, about four or five years older than me, because um, they had some inner politics within a team. My dad said, well, I'll coach them. So he was coaching that team and my team. And I looked up to that team, like, because they were just so much bigger and, and yeah. old and faster. And I'm like, man, they're so, so great. You know, I'll just want to, I want to play on that team, but he never, he never put me on that team. <laughs> but um, I mentioned that team because what, what struck me was uh, when my dad passed uh, about nine years ago, a lot of that, those team, those players from that older team came to his funeral and they presented him with this plaque and and I, I remember looking at that plaque and what the plaque said was, uh, Coach Hurley, thank you for f helping us become the men that we are today. And that hit me so hard because I looked at it and was like, that's why I want to coach. That's why I'm still coaching these, these girls. That's why I'm, I still want to do this because of the impact that coaching has on, on the youth. And if I can have just a little bit of impact, then it, you know, it would be... I would feel like, hey, that's that's a great fulfillment. That's just great. And, um, you know, that's maybe that's what got me into it. My wife said, you know, do you want to coach? Uh, because, you know, I, that experience that of my dad coaching me, I wanted to also give to my son. And now I'm giving it to my daughter as well. That's super powerful. And just the word impact that I keep kind of hearing. Um, and then also tying back to something you said earlier about that you've been so excited with the girls that they're becoming these awesome young women, which was what you, it sounds like your dad had that impact on them as becoming men that are now doing great things, you know, as adults and what have you. And I'm sure that's something you, when people say, well, what impact did you make? Well, you're like, just wait 10 years and see what these girls are doing. They're going to be doing amazing things, maybe on the soccer field, but I know for sure off the field, they're going to be doing some awesome stuff as well. Correct. Correct. And, and I look at it when I'm coaching them. Uh, it, it's not just about teaching them how to kick the ball or trap the ball. It's teaching them how to be, you know, teammates. It's teaching them how to have a good work ethic that that goes past the soccer field. You know, it can go into their their school life, into college life, into their careers and, and their family life. It's 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 creating this structure where, where they can be successful no matter what they set their minds to. But soccer will give them that maybe that, that self-esteem or that encouragement to say, hey, I can accomplish this here. Maybe if I apply the same principles of hard work and, and just, just doing it to my personal life, I'll be successful in that as well. So true. It's so awesome to hear that. Um, the other thing that I, I loved was that your dad sounded like he just in, like, was an, a constant learner of the game, like he was reading books, like you said, and I'm sure, you know, as videos became more and more prevalent and stuff, is that something that you also kind of put into place? Are you a, a big learner of the game? I, I try to learn as, as much as I can. Um, you know, I started, when I first started coaching, I, I thought, okay, um, I've played for so many years. I know the game, I could coach it, no problem. And I started, you know, doing it. Okay, it's fine. But then I went to the the e course when when uh, U.S. Soccer had their e course, and it was just for the weekend. But I learned a lot, and I'm like, wow, how you know this? You know, I can have a theme of soccer. Like, hey, we're you know instead of doing like one drill dribbling, one drill shooting, one drill uh, passing, let's have a theme. Okay, hey, today we're just going to go over passing today, we're, and, and then have little drills that that combine into that one theme, and it was just so. My, you know, mind open and that um, I just applied it instantly. Um, but then 
then I was like, you know, I want to do the D course. So I, I did the D course and the D course almost turned me off from coaching altogether because I don't know, maybe it was the instructor or what, but it, it was just so stressful. And to me, soccer shouldn't be stressful. And that was the, the, the most stress I've ever felt dealing with anything of soccer. And I remember coming home and telling my wife, if I ever say I want to do another course, just tell me, you know, no, because I can't do this again. Um, but of course, after I got my D license, I set myself on the seat and <laughs> I did that and that. And uh, I, I don't regret one bit. The C was just phenomenal. And um, the way I look at it is if I'm not learning, how can I, you know, how can my players learn? If I'm not developing myself, I can't develop my players. Uh, so I always want to try to, to learn as much as I can uh, so that I can apply it to my players so that they can grow in that same manner. I think the, it's interesting your comment about even the instructor within a course. I think it's the same within teams. Like you hear about, you know, if, if you know, depending on who's coaching what group. Like I've talked about it with some players before. It's like, yeah, it's great to go to a club that's renowned for being really good. But if you don't get the right coach in that mix, then the experience isn't as, as great. So I think it's an interesting point you make that depending on who your instructor is and how they kind of let things go and whatever. But I love the idea that you said, like soccer, like we're doing this, we're coaching, these kids are playing because they enjoy playing the game. Um, and even your story earlier of looking up to that older team, like, oh my gosh, like how f cool are they? They run so fast, they're so physical, the ball gets hit so hard. Um, that's what we're trying to it, it, like put into these, you know, into these younger players and what have you, even at the coaches, the coaches love this game. We want to go to courses and get that passion kind of built up even more. Oh, I, I agree. And I mean, and what I tell my players, Hey, this is a game. It's supposed to be fun. You know, whether you're winning or losing, yeah, win, uh, losing is never fun, but, but it, you can make it fun. And, and the learning process is fun because it's just a game. You know, when, when all is said and done, it's a game and, and we have to look at it. And I know it's hard, especially for the parents that's sitting on the sidelines to look at it as, as a game. Um, but, you know, I, I just have to keep the girls focused, let them know, hey, just go out there, have fun, but use what you've learned and everything will be all right. Everything will take care of itself. Is, has your time in Houston, is that, are you a born and raised Houstonian or where were you before getting to Houston or what's it kind of a timeline of that? So, yes, I was born and raised in Houston. Um, I, I lived all through, you know, since till I was 19 in the Houston area. Um, I joined the Navy uh, at 19, uh, went overseas, was on a ship for four years, uh, met my wife who was also in the Navy. And, um, and then I got out to be a civilian and, and she had orders to Hawaii. So we lived in Hawaii for a few years. And then we eventually moved back here to, to Houston um, and started our, our family. That's awesome. Well, mass respect for your time for, for protecting the country and what have you. Um, the, the, so the cool thing I love about that is, so um, I heard you say that the girls league is the dynamo league so i'm assuming that's connected somehow to is that connected to the mls team or is that just a like i think it, it's, it's more of, of they're using the name the dynamo dash league um it, I, I don't believe it's any affiliation with the mls other than just the the namesake of it but i mean we do have um locally a, a you know a dash youth and a dynamo youth soccer club um, it's not part of their academy. It's just like, again, the namesake, but they do have a separate academy, like the girls academy and the boys academy as well. Nice. Is, um, is your projection, so as you keep moving up, so you're at your C license, is there aspirations to continue on in the licensing thing? Are there asks, because at some point these girls are going to kind of age out and go into the college level and all that. Are there aspirations for you to maybe jump from club to high school to maybe start looking at the college level or are there any aspirations for you in that in that kind of realm definitely definitely i i, I want to keep pursuing the licenses 
um, as long as they'll accept me into the, the next licenses. I know there's a, there's an application process that you have to go through. Um, but yeah, as long as I can get in those, I, I want to keep pursuing. I'm going to keep applying and keep going until they let me in. I'll be down the door, you know, <laughs> until let me in. Cause I, I want to learn. I want to get better, um, because I want to keep coaching, um, whether it's, you know, one day having my own club, uh, starting that, or, you know, going in, uh, into coaching college. I would love to coach the, uh, uh, you know, women's college soccer. I mean, especially since I'm at this age group now and, and most of them are going to be graduating, you know, in the next few years, I would love to continue that. Um, that's, you know, doing this eventually for a living. I would love to do that. That'd be, you know, this is a dream job. Yeah. I think the cool thing is I can hear like this, the energy and excitement, just even when I brought that up, you were like, yeah, I want to freaking, I want to keep crushing this. I want to keep learning, but I want to keep taking, like getting more challenges coaching wise. Like, let, okay, I'm, I, you're clearly being successful at the club level um, with your, your group now um, moving forward. And now maybe you say like, what's the next challenge that I can take on? And maybe it's, it's a college thing or, or something like that, which I think is awesome. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I, I mean, I always want to challenge myself. I, 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 look at soccer. I always tell my girls, you know, what is soccer? I ask them, what is soccer? And they know the answer. It's a thinking game, you know, because you, you constantly have to be thinking when, when you're playing this game. And I look at it as a chess match as well. Now from the coaching, you know, I've, I've played it, but from a coaching standpoint, I get, I get more tired coaching than I ever had playing. And the reason why is because I'm in my mind, I'm playing all 11 positions at the same time. And, and trying to, to coordinate that and then see what the other team is doing and strategizing and moving. And so it's all happening in my mind and I, it, it's draining, but it's, it's just a, a rush that, that I can't describe. And so if I can keep getting better at that and learning uh, that, you know, more of a skill set, uh, like a chess match, I mean, that, I'm all about it. Now, is your, is your wife a soccer, um, like, into it or is she just like I'll let you deal with that I'll take care of some other things correct she she didn't really have she didn't know what she was getting into when she married me as far as the, the soccer uh, <laughs> life <laughs> so yeah she, she lets me know but no she's she's super supportive and um, she she's feels you know I, I think my energy goes you know, flows off of me onto her because she feels it too. And she's just as much involved and into it and, and helps when, when she can. But um, yeah, she understands that, that we are a soccer family and, and that's what we're about. And I know before we got on here, you said you had five kids. Mm -hmm. um, are, are all the, is this your oldest that you're coaching now? So then I'm wondering, is there, do the other ones play as well? So um, yes, I am coaching my oldest. So my son, who's uh, just a couple of years younger than her, who I started coaching uh, originally at three, you know, he played for a few years and then um, he has some some issues with his knee where uh, he kind of uh, took some time off to recover that. But then eventually his team, you know, kind of disbanded. So um, we're going to be putting him in another club team and then he'll be starting high school next year and he'll, he'll continue playing. Um, but you know, for me, I, I'm left footed. Um, I'm left-handed also, but, you know, growing up, you know, in the eighties left-footed, that was kind of like a phenomenon, you know, not too many people were playing soccer lefties and, um, I could see how it helped me somewhat, uh, uh get some kind of an advantage because everyone was going right. I was going left. Um, and so I was telling my wife, you know, I need a left. We got to have a lefty in the, as a kid, we got to, <laughs> and the fifth kid turned out to be a lefty. Um, so he's, he's, you know, he was two years old. He's, he's five now, but at two years old, he's kicking left foot. I'm just like, so, so tickled about it. I'm like, yes, we're definitely putting him in now. How I'm going to go. If, if, if I do coach him, how I'm going to go to, to going from, you know, adult, or almost adult women to coaching back to six, seven, that that'll be a, a different change, but you know, I'm up for that challenge again. That's really cool too. Cause I think it'll be awesome because you've already done it before. So I think, you know, some of the the pitfalls of dealing with that age group a little bit from and what you've seen and what worked with the, like your daughter's group and going through it from the younger ages with the boy a boys group there was kind of like you know like you said I kept having new kids come in and stuff so I think that's cool that you have that to fall back on whereas the first time you're like I'm just trying to figure this out kind of like your dad 
when he first hopped into the mix uh, type of thing. The cool thing too is um, them, you talked about being able to look up to that older group. Now your younger children are looking up to those older ones and looking at how much fun they have. And be, I'm sure they're on the sidelines of games and tournaments and stuff and like experiencing the whole, whole thing. And they have to be like, that's slowly like just pulling them in. Like, I want to be a part of this. I think it is. I, I believe, I mean, they've had made comments about it in the, uh, in the past. So yeah, they definitely see the, the energy that, that comes with the game of soccer. They've, they've seen uh, their sister play and, and how much uh, praise she gets and, and the rest of the team and, and the cheering that goes on. So I think it all adds to that, uh, that uh, wanted to keep doing it and, and maybe get involved in that. That's so, so stinking cool. Um, so what does, what does the summer look like in, in world, in terms of the club? Like when does your club season end and like, is there a downtime or is it kind of a 365 type of experience? So well, normally the way it would work is our spring would end for club like around April. And then, you know, we would maybe go to a, a tournament at that, you know, a little after that. And then for the summer we're off until we start back up in end of July, beginning of August. Now, during the summer, I would hold uh, training for whoever wants to come maybe once a week just to get them going. Um, this year may be a little bit different just because um, now that we're a little bit older, I got juniors on, on the team that are looking hopefully to play in college. Um, I want to do more tournaments. Uh, it, it, even if it, they're showcase tournaments or, you know, tournaments where, where college coaches come out to. Um, so I, I may do more of those uh, closer to the, the beginning of summer. I mean, our summer is uh, here in Houston kind of starts in May, you know, that's how, how hot it gets. But, um, you know, that's what we're, we're, we're looking forward to do. And, and then uh, just keep trying to do some kind of pra team practices and keep the team together so that um, when we do start again for fall, we're, we're ready to go. That's an interesting thing I didn't even think about was the temperature, you know, like in Ohio, we actually have to start later with our club season because of cold and, and snow and all that stuff. And we go into like June versus you're like, dude, if we play in June, you're going to have a bunch of like, it's scorching out there. It is, it is scorching, especially when we start our just the fall season because our the first game is normally like the first week of September. And I mean, it's, it's just so hot. And I mean, constant water breaks and we always make fun, you know, watching, you know, let's say the, the premier league and it's, you know, 75 and they it degrees and they have a water break. I'm like, wow, that, they're having a water break. I would love to play in 75 <laughs> degree weather, <laughs> you know, with a water break, you know, we may get a water break if it's 92 or something, you know, but uh, it's, it, it is a different experience I'm sure than, than up North. Yeah. I think that's uh, another one of those kind of dynamics, like earlier, like balancing club versus in high school at the same time versus um, just your environment that you're in uh, makes a huge kind of impact on all those types of things. I apologize about that, some darn technology. No, <laughs> hey, that's, that's the, the field that I'm in. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, computer consultant by day okay cool so you would gladly uh say goodbye to the world of technology and become a full-time coach definitely <laughs> <laughs> and, and a heartbeat if, if, if i could if it would pay my bills definitely yeah but like we were saying before i had to cut you off uh yeah it's been really really cool for me to hear the like like I said, you're the third person in a row that's shared a story about their, like their father that was a coach and then passed away and then getting texts, emails. Like this one was really, really cool that they literally showed up to, you know, with a plaque and stuff like that just, I think it just speaks to the impact that we can have as, as coaches and what have you. And clearly he, his jumping in all both feet into coaching when you were younger has made a huge impact on where you're at now. Definitely. Um, you know, I don't know where, what I would be doing if, if he hadn't have started, you know, wanting to coach um, because, 
it, it has been truly a journey for me. Um, and when I was coaching the girls um, and the boys at the same time, and they were still young, you know, seven, eight, you know, we did have to move away um, to a different city, you know, about 40, 45 minutes away. Um, and I contemplated, like, am, am I still going to be able to coach them at that distance? Um, but when I looked at it, you know, and I, I thought about, you know, my dad coaching me and, and, and the impact he had, I thought, I want to finish what I started with these girls. I have to finish it. I want to see this whole thing through till they graduate. And so uh, I talked to my wife and said, I'm going to still coach. And so it was, it was a lot on her because she was the one that had to bring the kids to, you know, 40 minute away practice fields. Whereas I could just come from, from the office, from work, um, and which was a little bit closer than the home. Um, and so three, four days a week, she's going back and forth uh, with the kids. And, but we made it work and, you know, we're still, I'm still coaching most of those, those same girls. And yeah, we, we've lost a couple along the way. We've gained a, you know, a lot of talent and, and we just have a successful team and it's been great. That's so cool. I love the dynamic between you and your wife, because it seems like you have a really good kind of like understanding of like, if I'm going to do this, there's going to be like, it's kind of a give and take type thing. And it sounds really cool to be supportive from her end. Um, and also knowing that the impact that you're going to make on your, on your kids' lives is going to be such a, so beneficial. Sure. And, and she realizes that as well. She sees the impact that, that I can have on them. And she knows how it, how I am when it comes to coaching. She knows how it makes me feel and, and what it fulfills in me to just do that and, and, and instill the passion that I have for the game of soccer into these players, uh, because I want them to fall in love with the game, just like I am in love with the game. It was cool too. Cause I was, I, you know, went through, I always check out the profiles of guests and stuff. So I was kind of going through your Facebook page and I was like, man, where is, is it Valkyrie? Is that right? Valkyrie. Uh-huh. Valkyrie. And I was like, where uh-huh. is this place? And I kept, and I kept looking and I'm like, I don't know where this is. So it was really cool to hear Houston. Cause I just talked with Hector Cano was one of my guests. He's in Western Texas down by uh, the Mexican border. Mm-hmm. And then I just talked with Joe Janner last couple of weeks ago. And he's from, he's with FC Dallas East, Texas. So he's on there. So I'm like, man, I'm crushing Texas right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he had just gone through the whole thing. He's like, dude, this, this ice and stuff came through and we don't have snow plows. We don't have de-icer. We don't have any of the salt. We don't have any of that stuff. So we just had to like let nature take care of things to fix it. <laughs> yeah. As I said, it, it was a, a different experience. You know, I was trying to figure, okay, I got to cover pipes and, 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 you know, cover this and cover that. And uh, it was, it was different. Uh, it was a new experience. I hope we don't have to go through that again, especially, um, you know, we, we were only down without power for about 38 hours. I know there was others that were down for even longer than that. Um, and, you know, having five kids in a house with, without power for that long, that kind of, you know, that, that could, but it was, it was good family time. I was going to say, what was that experience for the, for the kiddos? Did they, were they running around outside and stuff, or was it more just, it's too cold, I'm going out? Uh, they, they tried to run outside as long as they could and, and play <laughs> in the, the little snow we had and, and build the smallest snowman I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, they, they were able to at least get out there and have fun and, and get off the electronics for a while and, and uh, actually talk to each other. <laughs> kind of that uh, kind of quarantine-ish feel. What, ha- what is the impact of COVID right now on like on your club type thing? Are there restrictions or, I mean, is it pretty much wear a mask to and from practice or what's kind of the, the thing right now? Sure, it's, it's kind of laxed. Uh, you know, that's how I, I guess, you know, Texas is kind of opening it up now. Uh, but when we started back in August, uh, or actually July, I wasn't sure if we were going to even ha- be able to form a club team. I didn't know if we were going to even have a season. Um, it was kind of un- uncertain times. So when when uh, I you know started uh, p- 
ping in the parents saying, hey, who's going to play in this season? Um, I got positive responses, but then I got a few that didn't want to return, just wanted to wait it out. So when all said and done, I had 11 players. I had nine returning and two new players. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, I have 11. I have enough. I can make it work if we need to. Um, and what ended up happening was uh, our sister team, and I call them our sister team because they're, they're a couple of years younger than us. Um, they, and they practice on the same field as us and we scrimmage from time to time. Um, they only had 10 players returning. Uh, so what we did was, you know, I took seven of their players and had a roster of 18. So now I have a full squad, but now we're just trying to see if we are going to play, uh, have a season, a fall season. Um, and then it was a matter of where we're going to practice. And that was a tough thing because our practice fields are ran by the county and the county had everything closed down and they weren't allowing anybody to practice. So it was a matter of of looking to see where uh, we could practice, you know, if it was a patch of grass, a community field. Um, so we asked around and uh, thankfully some of my parents had connections with another club uh, close by and they allowed us to, to use their practice fields uh, free of charge. And so now we had a practice field and then we had a season. So we were set and it, it was great. I love the fact that two coaches were able to kind of combine their teams together. It wasn't like, Oh no, these are my 10 girls. You can't have those 10 or, and what have you. It, it, we've kind of talked about a little bit, just that kind of like, no, oh, this is my group. You can't come in. And, and you were like, look, if we have an opportunity to play, let's create an opportunity for as many of these girls to, to get out there and play in the fall. Um, so I think that's, it's refreshing to hear that they were like, yeah, here, I've got 10, I clearly don't have 11 to play, so I'm not, I can't just tell these 10 not to play, so I'm going to let you kind of take over a majority of them, which I think is really cool. Sure, and, and yeah, it was definitely a blessing to, to have uh, them come over and join the team, um, and they, did, they weren't worried. Uh, the parents weren't worried uh, about playing older because, like I said, they're, they're 2006 and 2007 and playing against 2004 players, but I guess they've held their own. They've they've developed. They've learned, and and like I said, we're we're sitting in first place at the moment. So it, it, it's been a fun, you know, club season this year. It, it's it's one of the the funnest that I've ever been a part of, um, because of that dynamic. Because coming together with two separate teams and getting them on the same page with the same mindset and and to that that goal. And what I told them before the season started was, this is our goal. This, we we want to finish in first place. This is what we're setting our sets to. And I know it's kind of like a cliche, but this is, I, I really felt that we had that opportunity to do that this season. Um, and I said, this is what it's going to take. And so let's get there. And, you know, here we are. The cool thing too is like, I always keep harping back to earlier things where you had boys and girls that practice together. So that was kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, abnormal. Like you said, it was always girls versus girls and the boys are here. Now you've got a group of like 04s down to 07s. What a drastic kind of change in age. And I know physically the differences in two to three years is can be pretty dynamic and, and, and large. And I think it's cool again, because of it not being normal, it's causing them to be challenged a little bit more, which is really good for them. And I think it's probably challenged you a little bit as a coach as well at, in both situations. Sure, because it's it it is a, a physicality at, at times, and you know it's a it's a broad range of skill levels. That also because some have been playing three four years longer than than mm -hmm. the others, um, it, but it's it, the way I look at it is, is iron sharpens iron. So when they come together on the practice field and, and they're training against each other, you know one one person has to has to uh, step up and challenge the other person, and vice versa. And then at, at, at some point they're both challenging each other and, and striving to get better and as one gets better the other one gets better and, and vice versa so it, it's been fun and you know I tried to to create uh, practice sessions that will allow that type of uh, challenge for both of them you know try to keep it as game like as possible so they're constantly um, having that same energy level that they that they would face in a game against opponents that are going 110 percent you know we're just going slowly at practice and you know we're never going to get better that way 
that's a great point. That's a great point. Like if it's, they always hear about it, it has to be harder in practice than the games kind of thing. Sure. Uh, to prepare you. What were, um, so like I'm at the D level in terms of my license, what are some of the, what would you, if you were trying to sell it to me, you sound like you had a really good op or experience with the C course. What were some of the things that you felt like were pros or great things that you took away from that experience? So the, the main thing was 10 days. It, it was, I believe 10 days, basically living with other coaches, you know, that it, that's what I love. I mean, it was just soccer talk 24 seven. I mean, we'd go to lunch. It's talk. We're talking coaching and soccer. We go to dinner, talking coaching. Talk. I mean, it, it was just so, I mean, I would call my wife and say, I'm, I'm just talking with people from all over the, the country. And then there were some that, you know, had, were from England that were now living in the States and they're joining the course. And now I'm getting an English perspective of soccer and it just was blowing my mind. And I was just learning so much and gaining so many different perspectives. Uh, that kind of collaboration was, it was what I took out of it, you know, the most, but at the same time, then you go into the actual training uh, and learning phase of it. And, and it was, it was again, uh, mind open and for me and gave me a different perspective of how I can tailor my training sessions to, you know, just as simple as basically, okay, look at game film, see where the, where, what the trends are, what the weaknesses are, what, what's, what's going on with your team that, that's, that's failing you and then go correct practice. And this is how you, you know, can tailor your practice to, to correct that. And I'm like, it's just a simple concept, but I never looked at it that way. Like, yeah, you know, we see things in a game when we're coaching, like, oh, you know, we, we need to work on this in practice. We need to work on that practice. But, you know, they kind of defined how you do that, the, the proper steps to kind of um, create the problem and then create the solution at the same time. And that's what uh, I brought back to my team. The that I've heard similar things from those that have gone to like the um, United Soccer Coaches like conference, you know, early in January. Um, where they said, yeah, the presentations are awesome, but it's the going out for lunch or going to grab a drink. And you sit there and like you said, you just are spewing and talking soccer and you get to hear different inputs and, and what have you. And that's so cool that the idea of like being on a campus, it sounds like, and just being surrounded by soccer, just passion the whole time. And everybody's just talking and talking and talking. It's so cool. Cause you're constantly just picking like, Oh, I never thought about that. Or like you said, to get input from someone who grew up over in England and where it's an actual religion um, and get their input and stuff is, is huge. And I love the idea that you took away from uh, the course, the idea of like, I know what the problem is. That's one thing to identify it, but it's another thing to be able to create what you call a solution, which I think is, is, is dynamite way of kind of like talking about it. So many of us can point like, Oh, that player struggles in this. Oh, well, that's cool. But now it's the coaching side. What can you do to help create that and improve it? Yep, correct. And, and it's it just gives you a different uh, perspective of, of, of looking at the game. And then, you know, going back to the training grounds and, and resolving it. And then trying to see if, okay, now in the next game, did we fix that problem or are we still having it? And, and it's just, a, you know, you just keep going over and over until you get it right. And then you move on to the next thing that, that were the next breakdown, you know, and, and you just keep building. It's kind of like I, what, the way I tailor my practices is, you know, I, I try to set a theme, you know, this, this is what the theme of the season is. This is what we're going to base everything around. And then we just go with little themes here and there. For instance, uh, this season, it was possession based soccer. You know, I wanted to stick with possession base. I wanted to just uh, keep the ball, maintain the ball as best we can while we're moving around. And then, with that, the, the sub themes were kind of like playing out from the back. Okay, we're going to focus. And for a whole month, that's what we focused on, playing out from the back. And we got that down. And then, okay, now I can move on to this piece. But until we could get that, I wasn't moving on from that. And, and so I just try to, you know, pick a piece and then just layer on layer on top of that um, so that then we can eventually get the whole, you know, by the end of the season, hopefully we have the whole thing completed. In order to take a month, that has to take quite a bit of patience on your end. 
um everybody wants that like i need it now like we gotta go let's move keep and everybody just kind of like monday we did this we're gonna go on to something different tuesday and i love the idea that no we're gonna focus and we're coming really good at this and then like you said the, a great uh kind of metaphor of layering it on there i think it's cool because we're so quick to like we got to get everything in and you're like look all that stuff will happen but we need we there's a process to what i've got going on yeah and and you know, I try, I, you know, when I start trying to figure out what we're going to do, I, I, you know, my process is kind of chaotic, you know, but it all, it seems to all work out. I don't, I, I'm not a coach that, that can write down, you know, my training sessions before or weeks before. I mean, I, I'll think of them, I think, okay, this is what I need to work on. What, from a player's perspective, what can I do to bring that topic out? What can I, what kind of drills would I run or would I want to run that will bring that out? Um, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes they don't work the, like I, like they have in my mind. You know, I see a vision, I'll wake up one day, I'm like, oh, we can do this. And it doesn't, it flaws, okay, we're changing that, we're moving on to something else. But uh, for the most part, it's just, yeah, sticking to that topic, sticking to that, that theme, and, and the team knows it, the team knows what we're doing, um, so that when uh, we do go to the game, they understand what's uh, expected of them, how we're going to play. And then if, if, something happens where I have to where a player doesn't show up and I have to put them in a different position they understand that role and, and their responsibility of the other player because they've seen it so many times because that's this is how we play and so it, it helps with the the fluidity of it and the cohesiveness of the team it sounds like you do a lot of kind of self-reflecting after trainings during training before like you're constantly at like you just said I asked myself what's going to help them and then I love the other thing that you said where you're like, look, if it isn't working, like in my head, it looked like what I thought we were going to get out of it and we're not, let's scratch it and we move on, which I think is another cool thing for the girls to see. Like, look, we can have all these great plans, but when we start doing it, there are times where things aren't going to work out and it's okay to be like, eh, let's try something different or let's tweak it or whatever, which I think is really cool to do in sort of the reflecting side of things and being able to say, not getting the job done like I was hoping. Sure. Um, you know, and, and it, you, you'll see, I mean, I'll see it at practice. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting that topic out. Um, you know, it's like the girls aren't, or maybe they're confused or I didn't explain it good enough, or it's just a, a dumb drill that, you know what, just scratch it. And then I'll just go back to something else that we've done that has a similar topic or, you know, to fall back on. And then I'll regroup while they're on the water break and, and figure, figure the next thing out. But for the most part, it's all, it, you know, all my uh, practices are, you know, more or less, you know, focused on one thing so I can pick and pull um, from different things that I've done in the past so that it all still goes together. I love it. I love it. Brian, man, I do. I really appreciate you taking the time and dealing with the interruptions and all that stuff in the middle. But um, I will, uh, I'll be putting this together. I, I post it on YouTube. And I put it on Anchor. It's like a, just a podcast thing that you can listen to. So once I get all that, sure. stuff, and I'll I'll look you up on on uh, Twitter because I don't think I'm connected to you there. So now I know how to find you. Um, and what have I'm excited to hear how your how if your team continues the rise because um, if they move on to I think you said like state league, state what, state classic league, yes, yeah. So that would start in the coming fall. Correct. Correct. If we get promoted, uh, the top two teams get promoted up there. And yeah, that would start in the fall. And then we'd be playing, you know, there's a wide range of teams. We'd be playing not just in the Houston area, but in the San Antonio and the Austin Dallas area as well. I was just going to ask, like, it sounds like when it's state league, you're talking, we're all over the, all over Texas here. Correct. Correct. Uh, at least, at least the, the, the Southern part of Texas. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been a journey because, you know, we started, division three and then we just slowly move up you know division two and then when i feel hey we're ready to go division one let's do it and now hopefully we can move up to the next league and just keep getting promoted the promotion relegation that people are dying, dying for here in the <laughs> right. u.s but i feel like we have it at the youth level it's in some form and uh it makes it kind of fun like you're constantly watching the table and all that stuff but uh Brian, this has been a sweet conversation. If people want to connect with you and follow up on everything there, or even if maybe 
because I'll be throwing this out there. Hopefully, maybe a college coach here and says, hey, I love what Brian's talking about. Maybe he'd be a great asset to our, our program or staff. Uh, what's a great way to get in contact with you? Um, the best way, uh, I have a Twitter account. It's uh, Coach Hurley 6, the number 6 at the end. Um, or you can reach me uh, by email at Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at ValkyrieSoccer.com. So I will wrap this thing up. I'll put all that information in the episode notes. I really appreciate Brian taking the time to chat with me. This is Karen with the Coach's Corner Chats, and I'm out. Peace.